Good morning. And welcome to Hayden Congregational Church, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. As you are able, please rise as we prepare our hearts and our minds in the spirit of worship. with me. We will study God's Word. Come and kneel with me. We will break the bread. Come and walk with me. We will part the waters. Amen. Amen. see it.
little things on them, right? For your prizes? Yep. Okay, we're here for the children's message now. Hi, bud. Um, I'm going to do something here, and I, okay, see? I've got a hymnal, and then I have another hymnal. You think I can hold all these? And then I have another one. But oh my gosh, they're getting heavy and I need two hands. So now, how can I hold the, how can I put more hymnals on this stack? Both my hands are busy holding this. How can I put more hymnals on there? Anybody know? I think Henry might have an idea. Good job, Henry. Thank you, buddy. Okay, how about some more? Let's go. The one is not very heavy. Well, these are getting kind of heavy. Oh my gosh, look at this. We got two at a time. <laughs> oh my gosh, they're so heavy. Thank you for helping me. Now, can you help me put them back on the table? Okay. Oh, you don't have to take that many. Oh, I need you guys to help me. Thank you. Here, Henry. Arden, you want these? Good job, guys. I love that. 
Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Dear God, Dear God. Thank you for the many people in my life who can help me when I need help. May I always remember to be a helper when I am able. Amen. Amen. Good job. Good job. It's been so much fun having you guys up here. Thank you for coming up. And remember, Jesus loves you. Oh, I've been waiting a long time for that.
you understand what you're reading? And the eunuch replied, how can I, unless someone explains it to me? And then he invited Philip to sit with him in the chariot to discuss the scriptures. As they traveled and they discussed it, the man was so touched by the teachings about Jesus Christ that he asked to be baptized in some nearby water. Philip fulfilled the eunuch's wishes. And then Philip, scripture says, went away, never to be seen again by this man, but this man was rejoicing God. Let's back up now just a little bit and look at the scripture text that's printed in your bulletin. Take a look at the portion that begins with verse 36. Does anybody notice anything peculiar about those last passages beginning in 36 and going to the end? 37 is missing. Yes, Stephanie. To understand why 37 is missing from this passage, let's look at a little bit of history. The text that we commonly use to share scripture in this congregation is from the New International Version of the Bible. And that was first published in 1978. Over 20 years prior, an engineer from Seattle named Howard Long was known for sharing the gospel and his love of the King James Version of the Bible. But he found it difficult when he was trying to reach out to non-Christians from the King James Version. He found it difficult for them to understand and be able to identify with that. And so the King James Version was originally written in 1611. So it had been written 300 years prior, and it was revised in 1769, but that was still 200 years prior. Well, this man, Long, set out on a 10-year journey to create a new Bible translation that would capture the Word of God in contemporary language that was more appropriate, more fitting to the current day and time. In 1965, a gathering of scholars from differing denominations, they began work on the New International Bible. And they chose not to take the King James Version and to revise it, but they chose to start from scratch. And they took the original texts that were written in Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic, and they worked with those and came up with their version of the New International Bible. And that first vision version was published, as I said, in 1978. Well, this brings us back to why is verse 37 not in the New International Version of the Bible? And it is in the King James Version. After these men, these scholars, studied the original manuscripts, it's believed that they found that this verse may have been added later and not a part of the original composition. They may have added it to make it flow better from verse 36 to what we know as 38. Let's listen to how that would read if that were in there. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What can stand in the way of me being baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And the eunuch answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he gave orders to stop the chariot, and then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and baptized, Philip baptized him. So you can see why it would have been in there, but I think that the writers of the New International Version wanted as close to the original text as is possible. And those words that we find in that verse 36 are now spoken, a version of them are spoken whenever we baptize someone. We have often shared how the Bible was written in words that pertain to the crowds of listeners who were present at the moment. And as you know, things aren't the same now as they were back in 1611 when the King James Version was written. 
nor are things the same as they were in 1978 when the New International Version was written. So for that reason, we continue to read and study and interpret scriptures to put them into words, into terms that speak to our lives today. One good way to study the scriptures is to place yourself in the story. Find a character in the story and read it as if that character were you. In today's passage, thinking of the Ethiopian eunuch, what do we know about him? He was the treasurer of the Ethiopian queen. That's what you were going to say? Sorry. What was he doing in the passage? He was reading the Bible. He was returning from worship and he was reading the Bible and he had trouble. He had questions. Yeah, he had trouble understanding it. And then he accepted Jesus Christ and was baptized. Can any of you relate with this man? Trouble understanding. Yeah. Okay, let's look at Philip. What do we know about Philip in this passage? He followed guidance by the Holy Spirit and he traveled on that deserted road. He understood. He understood the scriptures and he took time to stop and help someone who didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And he was in the right place at the right time. I think that's something that we can all identify with. We have all had found ourselves in the right place at the right time. And it might have been, you know, that we're traveling off in a direction that we always go, or it might be we're traveling in a direction that we don't know why we're going that way, but we, were, we felt led to go that way for some reason. And then something happened. Might have been a meeting or a conversation or an impact on somebody's life. But the ordinary incident then becomes extraordinary. And so we recognize that we were in the right place at the right time. Because the Holy Spirit leads us to those places. We might even claim that it was the Holy Spirit or the angel. And we may be correct in saying so. So let's be like Philip. Let's go where the angel leads us and share the stories of Jesus with people all along the way. Amen.
and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in each other, and in all for whom Christ died. Amen. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life that Christ brings. <coughs> the gifts of God for the people of God come for all things are ready. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. 
strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us now pray the prayer our Lord has taught us to boldly pray. Our Father, Creator, who art in heaven, gather our hearts together in prayers for our community and our world. Loving God, we come to you this day with thanksgiving that you are with us, walking beside us and guiding us through our days. We pray that you will use us as you use Philip. We pray that you will speak to us through your angelic messengers and by the Holy Spirit. Please lead us to people who wish to know more about God and have open and teachable hearts. We pray that you will help us know how to initiate conversations with others about spiritual things and that you will help us explain to them the truth of your word. Give us clarity and power in telling others the good news about you. We pray that through us, many will place their faith and trust in you. May they experience great joy because of their relationship with you. And I pray that you will continue to use us wherever we go to communicate the gospel to everyone you lead us to. Today we lift up your children of God who are on the prayer list. May they be wrapped with your love and your healing power and your comfort. And we lift to you also those things that are on our heart, those concerns and the weight that is on our hearts that we are lifting to you in the privacy of our own hearts. These things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us now go forth willing to help those who need us to help them understand. And let us go forth asking questions when we don't understand. Let us go forth spreading the stories of Jesus as Philip did. Go now in peace. Amen.